how do you want the future to be? Do you want a future that is a continuation of food stamps? Do you want a future that is filled with fornication and adultery and drunkenness? Do you want a future that is a continuation of begging for the crumbs that fall from the master's table? Do you want a future that is filled with dope addicts? Do you want a future that is filled with poverty? What was left for you? An empty wine bottle, a cigarette butt, a partial rock that was smoked and left. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Poverty and garbage up to your eyes. If that's what you want, continue doing what you're doing. But if you want a future that is brighter than your presence, then you have to work on the children so that the children will bring in the future that you have in mind. And you can be a soul at rest with a smile on your face in the coffin. Swing low. So I stopped to uh, listen to what he had to say. All praises is due to Allah, <laughs> who have made it possible for us to meet here this day, <laughs> to give honor, thanks for his coming and for his blessings. <laughs> he has now come in our midst. Yes, sir. He is with us. Yes, sir. I must say this, the brother was teaching on Jesus and the crucifixion. I guess many biblical uh, stories or many preachers to preach concerning Jesus uh, being nailed to the cross and uh, a crown of thorns uh, put on his head and embedded into his skull and nails put in his hands and feet and a spear pierced into his side. So, uh, but this uh, preacher was uh, presenting it to me in a way that I had never heard. Uh, he said that uh, if we look at it properly, as we should in other scriptures, when scripture referred to a certain man, it's always a certain man, certain man by the pool, a certain man named Lazarus, a certain man born blind. It was always a certain man. And as I uh, mentioned to you earlier, that there are five men on this earth, black man, brown man, red man, yellow man, and Caucasian, or white man. So when you say white man or black man, you're not speaking of an individual, you're speaking of a whole race or whole nation. When you say yellow man, you're talking about all Chinese. You say red man, you're talking about all Native Americans or Indians. So when scripture points out a certain man, instead of us looking at it on a larger or greater level than an individual, like Lazarus lying at the rich man's gate begging for the crumbs that fall from his table, not an individual, but a whole people. Do, do you follow what I'm saying? A whole people lying at the rich man's gate begging for crumbs. 
And he said those crumbs was uh, jobs. And then, you know, it began, I, be, I began to see the overall picture, you know. He was saying favors, you know, crumbs. And they're not begging for a half a loaf or a, head, uh, a whole loaf. They're just begging for crumbs. And then he took that a step further. He said, now, when you look at Jesus, he said, Jesus, yes, it is an individual of 2,000 years ago, but it also is in representation of a man that has been nailed to the cross. Do you get the picture of what I'm saying? A whole people been nailed to the cross. Their hands nail that handicaps them from doing something for themselves. And the crown of thorns buried into his skull, it kills the brain power. So he's unable to think for himself. And you know, the brother was really rapid. I'm listening to this, you know. And as he go on to show where the hands was nailed and then the feet was nailed, he was unable to walk as a free man on the earth. And then his side had been pierced where his life blood, the very life of him had been drained out of him that rendered him weak and unable to do anything for himself. And there he is just lying there naked before the world, naked. I said, was this clothing? He said, well, not the clothing that you and I know, but the clothing of a knowledge of himself, wisdom of himself, a knowledge of God, a knowledge of the true way of life. And so I began to look at that and it appeared as though that it was um, like turning on a light bulb in my head. It just said, doing. <laughs> you never read in the Bible, Jesus said, I'm a Christian. Come on, Reverend! He didn't say it in Matthew. He didn't say it in Mark. He didn't say it in Luke. He didn't say it in John. Well, what are you fighting over? I don't want to go hear Farrakhan because he ain't no Christian. He don't love Jesus. Stop lying. I can prove to you that you don't love it. So I began to, uh, after that lecture, I came back again and again and again.